Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm answering one of the hardest questions I've heard so far about Palantir, and it came from the one and only Dave Lee. Dave Lee just did a podcast with Tom Nash. If you don't know Dave Lee, I'll link his channel below, I'll link Tom Nash's channel below. Uh, both phenomenal, phenomenal YouTubers, both understand the world of stocks, investing in finance at a very deep level. And Tom is very big on Palantir. He has 40% of his uh, portfolio allocated to, uh, to Palantir. And uh, Dave has like 95% of his assets allocated to Tesla. So Dave and, uh, Dave and, I said Dave and Palantir, Dave and Tom, basically Dave and Palantir, because Tom is Palantir, right? Dave and Tom just did a podcast together. And Dave is known for asking some very hard questions on his podcast. And that's what makes him a phenomenal interviewer. He's not someone who's just going to juice you up and hype you up and ask you easy ones. He's going to go deeper into your convictions and really see what is the logic and foundation behind those convictions in order to get a better perspective for the audience. On this podcast, he asked Tom a really important question that I hadn't thought about before. I mean, this is, and I, you guys know me, I think very deeply about Palantir, and this is still a question that I really had not pontificated before. Here's a clip of the question. We'll be back in 30 seconds. If Palantir is such a big AI play, right, this is something that they they tout as one of their key expertise where they say, we're really good at AI, right? At, at analyzing all this data, but yet they don't own the data, right? They're just coming in, providing the software for, for their clients, right? To analyze their data. But when you look at AI in the bigger picture, 10, 20 years down the road, it's like the, 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 the data is so valuable. You know, it's like without the data, it's like, you don't, AI can't do anything. And so it seems to me like, would, wouldn't the leverage always be with the company with the data? And then isn't Palantir kind of more this, I guess, I guess having minor leverage in the sense that what if there's a competitor and then the, the, the data company says, hey, I'm gonna go to a competitor because I have the data, right? Yep. Without having the data, where, where is the leverage that Palantir is gonna have you know, in the system? What's your kind of take on that? So to summarize his question, Dave is basically saying, okay, Palantir is a data company, right? They care about data. They, they care about helping your business make data-driven decisions. But when we think about data, and Dave's coming from this perspective because he's a heavy shareholder in Tesla, why aren't you betting on a company that actually owns the data? And what I mean by this is like Google, they don't theoretically own your data, but I mean, when you do a search result on Google, they like essentially own your data, right? Because you search for cars, they have indexed in their database that, that this person searched for cars. So they know what to recommend to you because you search for cars. And a lot of people I think in the world would say that's an actually good thing. It's not an evil thing that they do that. But as a result, they own your data. So owning shares of the company that owns that data is very valuable. In a world in which artificial intelligence and uh, uh, AIG or AGI, advanced general intelligence, is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the companies that have the data are going to be able to incorporate that data into a variety of different parts of life, which is basically what Tesla is doing with their cars, right? They put the camera on the car, the car gets millions and, you know, you have millions of cars on the road, they get millions and millions of uh, data on terms of how cars operate on the road. And all the data gets put into this AI machine learning machine that Tesla has in order to create the best full self-driving model to make sure that when they actually allow their software to update into all these cars when you have full self-driving, uh, that that car has been responsible to understand every single edge case scenario. It understands every single possible stop sign and what it looks like so that when the car is driving itself, it actually is able to drive itself. That is an incredibly valuable thing and that only happens as a result of the data that Tesla has. Additionally, Tesla can use that data that they have and build out the artificial intelligence networks that they have, the, the sort of machines that they have. And when I mean machines, I mean sort of like the Tesla bots, and they can incorporate the data that is proprietary to them, that they only have, into a lot of other elements of life. One of the best examples is if this Tesla bot gets so advanced because Tesla owns all the data that it's feeding into this bot, that robot could start doing a lot of things that humans don't want to do, like going and putting bricks on top of bricks when you're building a big skyscraper, things that are very dangerous for human beings. If the robot knows how to do that, we've eliminated and mitigated the risk for humans to have to deal with those potential problems. But that only happens when a company actually has proprietary data. So Dave's question is, okay, if Tesla has this proprietary data, right, if Google has proprietary data, why would you invest in Palantir, a company that doesn't really have proprietary data? They have a proprietary mechanism to understand how to deal with data. They have tons and tons of patents uh, that allow them to establish relationships within databases when they implement their Foundry flagship commercial software into your business and help you understand how to uh, integrate your data in order to make sense of it. But they don't actually own the data. So the question that Dave is asking is if you're going to allocate capital to a company that you're expecting a return on 10 years from now and data is the new oil, why wouldn't you bet on a company that actually has ownership 
over the proprietary data. So a couple of answers that I have to this. Now, Tom answered it as well, and I wanna give a shout out to his responses because I think he did a really, really good job, job responding to it. But I've been also thinking about it over the past couple of days, and obviously I've had time to think about it, whereas Tom was asked on the spot. Um, so I'm gonna build off of his responses and then also give a little bit of my perspective of what I think um, uh, about this question because it is one of the better questions I've heard about Palantir and a better like sort of bear case question around Palantir uh, if you have a long-term potential in, in terms of why would you invest in this versus that given they don't own the data. Number one, I would critique the question a little bit. And the reason I would critique the question a little bit is because it assumes that Palantir wants the data. Right? The assumption is the company with the data is going to be the company that's the most valuable. And I would just disagree with that because if we think of Palantir as a data mining company, in the words of Ross Gerber, then they are not the investment that we're thinking of it right now. Uh, I think one of the reasons we had such a hostile reaction to Ross Gerber, and if you don't know that, I'll leave a, a, a video in the uh, description on, on what he said on Palantir. He basically called them a data mining company that finds your data and sells it to the highest bidder. And that sounded absurd to anyone who actually knows Palantir because it was like, Actually, that's what they hate doing. Like, that's what Google does. That's what Facebook does. That's what Amazon does. They get your data. They sell it to advertisers. They sell it to third-party vendors. And then they make profit off of that. That's actually not what Palantir does. Palantir has created a business uh, model around selling software that can be integrated within your organization that takes data from thousands of different metrics and points and puts them together in one place and then uses advanced AI and machine learning to give you hypothetical simulated uh, scenarios in which you can drive your decisions based upon that data that is happening. So for example, if you need to make a decision in your supply chain and you need to know certain parts that are down the supply chain in order to stock up your, your shelves so that you don't like lose inventory and then you can't produce the thing that you're producing having all that data in one place and then having the machine just tell you what to do is a very simple task and that's uh, that's one use case of what palantir does off of thousands of different use cases of what they can do so they don't really sell the data because they don't need to have proprietary data and that's why i would critique the question i think the question is good but the assumption in the question is what i'm critiquing which is a company needs to have the data proprietary to them to be valuable now YouTube, some companies need to do that. YouTube needs to have proprietary data. YouTube cannot build a good recommendation video engine without having proprietary data over the videos. I believe in this heavily and I'm a very big YouTube bull. I think YouTube is far beyond Netflix if YouTube was actually its own public company because YouTube has proprietary data. You search for a Mitt Cookrage of Palantir, they know that you kind of care about my content with Palantir. They can recommend you more videos of me and that gives me a little bit more discovery and that gives you, the audience or the consumer, a better experience of consuming content. That proprietary data is necessary an integral in order to make YouTube function, in order to make YouTube the world's largest video uh, you know, library that it is to, and, and bring all the discovery that it brings to creators. Palantir doesn't need to have the data, in my opinion. And I think that opinion makes sense given all the research I've done of Palantir. They're not selling advertising. They're not selling subscriptions. They're not selling uh, this, this, this mechanism by which like the data that, that, that they have, they can, they can license out the data. They are selling a software that goes into organizations and makes sense of the data that they already have. So the only way this question is incorrect, or the only way my response to this question or my critique of the question is incorrect, is if the answer now becomes, okay, so Palantir doesn't need the data. They just need to sell you a mechanism that helps you make sense of your own data. Well, that doesn't seem like it's that uh, proprietary. That seems like it's, you know, it's a commodity. And like if the, the data is what's proprietary, it's really hard to build a YouTube competitor if you don't have the YouTube data. But for Palantir, if you could just have another company that's building the thing that makes sense of your data and you offer it at a fairly cheaper price and at a decently efficient manner, right? Let's say you're 70% of the efficiency and maybe 30% less of the cost and you go offer it to a Palantir client. Because Palantir doesn't actually have the client's data, right? They just have a mechanism to make sense of the data. That new competitor also doesn't have the client's data. So it's a wash on that point. So now it's just a question of cheapness and effectiveness. I think that's where Dave's going here, which is like, well, it's going to be really hard for anyone to beat Tesla, right? Because you just don't have the data. Like GM and Ford are not beating Tesla because they do not have the data. It is, they are, Tesla is just so far ahead on the data question. And that's proprietary to Tesla, which is why they're going to win. If Palantir does not have the data and a competitor comes up and does what Palantir does in, you know, a decently efficient way and for cheaper the price, then doesn't that make Palantir a commodity? Doesn't that make the mechanism that they're creating ultimately not the 10x, 20x bagger that we think we could be in the next 10 years? My response to that part of the retort to my critique of Dave's question 
is that I just disagree that anyone's going to be able to create a competing product at the level that Palantir is creating. And, you know, if, you, if you've done the research and you've sort of looked at what Palantir is doing, it's, it's kind of silly to assume there's competition in this regard. Not because there's not going to be competitors that are, that are going to have different ways to interact with Palantir, but primarily because they, they've been working on this for the past 17 years and the network effect advantage that they, that they have in terms of actually incorporating their software into companies, in terms of being subsidized by the CIA, the military, right, while they were actually building out the software, in terms of the crazy amount of patents they have. And I'm not saying the patents are like the holy grail here, but you have to kind of, I did a video on the patents. You have to kind of look at some of the stuff they're getting legally granted to them that only they really can do. And then you got to look at Alex Karp and how he's talking about his competitors. I just did a video on that as well, where he's, you know, asked explicitly, what do you think about Snowflakes and Databricks? And he's like, you know, snowflakes might as well just like fall on the ground and melt away because that's what snowflakes do. Palantir is here to stay forever. I just made that up. That was on the spot. But that was basically the idea of what Alex Karp said, right? He was basically like, yeah, they're competitors, but they don't do what we do. Um, and that's not to say they can't one day do what you do. That's not to say a Microsoft can't come in and do what Palantir does one day. But it just means to say that a lot of those organizations are bureaucratic and a lot of those organizations are doing things that are different. Carp explicitly mentions that Snowflake is built to like modularize their product and sell it across the sales force as much as possible to achieve maximum scale, right? That's why Snowflake is worth more than Palantir in this present moment. Something like Microsoft or Google, right? If they were going to go after Palantir, Google, 99% of Google's revenue or some ridiculous number like that is off the thing you search on the website, right? Like for them to not focus on that, which is what's going to keep shareholders happy because they have to increase that product. They have to innovate on that product because that's what's the bread and butter of Google and to and to put their time and focus into building what Palantir is building, that Palantir has spent 17 years trying to build, that has a 17-year head start, that already has relationships with clients integrating their that, that specific part of their platform inside that Google has no competitor with, Amazon has no competitor with, Microsoft has no competitor with. It would be the same as Palantir trying to get into cloud computing and go against AWS, Google Cloud, and Microsoft Azure. It just wouldn't make sense. That's not what they've been working on. So Google, Microsoft, Amazon, these are all bureaucracies that just have to focus on the thing that makes them money, which in Google's case is search, not data-driven decision-making centralized platforms that actually make sense of your data through digital twins and AI and machine learning and edge AI. Like That's not what Google would be doing. So the two use cases for competitors or the answers to competitors would be, okay, you've got another company that's cheaper and just as efficient. I vehemently disagree that that competitor can even exist. If you actually know what Palantir does, if you don't know what Palantir does, it's like, oh, they could be a competitor. If you actually know what Palantir does, it's like there's not going to be a competitor, not in that respect. And then you have the, bureau, the, the the big tech company that comes in. I just sort of gave a little bit of my explanation about why I just don't think that's possible because they're way too bureaucratic. And for them to focus on the stuff that Palantir is focusing with the intensity of focus that they're doing, with the level of talent they're attracting for what they're doing, I think is simply not possible given the amount of energy that Google and these corporations invest into their other products and services that actually make money that make shareholders happy. So at that point, that's sort of my response to the question. I do not believe that this company needs to own the data. I simply, I, I simply believe that this company has to have an effective mechanism to be able to make sense of the data. The sort of second final response I would give um, is I would think, uh, and this was building off Tom's response, I would think of Palantir as an operating system. I would think of Palantir as like Microsoft Windows, which is the example Tom used, which is, I thought it was a really good example, right? Like Windows, like Microsoft Windows doesn't own your data. They just provide you Excel, you know, uh, Microsoft Word, right, PowerPoint, and you incorporate that or like forget even those Office products, right? Just like Microsoft Windows, it's just an operating system that I use to like do stuff on my computer. It's either Mac or Windows, right? Th th there's no necessary, there's no need for them to have proprietary control over data in that situation. They're just giving you a platform in which you input your data. I put, you know, my uh, name into Microsoft Word. So it says, welcome Amit when I open up my laptop, right? I input everything into the operating system. The operating system just makes it easier for me to do what I need to do. And I think that's a really good way to think of Palantir. They are an operating system at the highest of highest of levels for drug discovery companies, healthcare companies, crypto companies, energy companies, oil companies. Um, you know, they're working with blockchain. They're working with all these different manufacturing companies, supply chain companies. There, there, there's so many different verticals in which all of these different businesses need an operating system to to make sense of the new oil that they're going to have over the next 10, 20 years, which is all this data that they're producing every single day at the levels of thousands and thousands of gigabytes. And at that point, if Palantir just wins the operating system market, if they win the Windows versus Mac debate, and there really is no other Mac if Palantir is Windows right now, then I think there's a good chance that, um, that, that, that they win that market and they don't need to have proprietary control over that data.
So those are my overall thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. I thought this was a phenomenal, phenomenal question. Bottom line thesis, I don't think they need to be a data company. I just think they need to provide a mechanism for them to make sense of the data. Also, final thing I'll say is that I don't think people want to give up their data that much anymore, right? So like Tesla gets the data because it puts the camera in the car and the car gets better as a result of them getting the data. But I don't think there's that many people that would willingly put like something on their Toyota and have it monitor how they're driving all the time, right? Tesla users put up with it because they know the risk reward, right? Okay, we give you all this car our data from our car because you're going to make a better full self-driving product and it's going to be better when we use it at the end uh, and that was sort of built into tesla's dna as they started from the very beginning but like for an average person an average company to get your data nowadays it's much more difficult right google gets it because google's ingrained in everything and we search for everything but there's a lot of private search engines that are popping up like people don't want to necessarily give up their data anymore so i think the the two the, the two sort of bottom line theses are that Ultimately, Palantir is an operating system and they don't need to have data. They just need to have proprietary control of how to make sense of that data. And we're going into a world in which things are getting more decentralized and users don't want to give up their data, which means it's not going to be the most competitive advantage to have that data, especially if the way you offer services to the world doesn't require you using that data, which is different than something like a Google or Tesla that simply have to have that data at the end of the day. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about Dave Lee's questions. I thought it was a great question and this is sort of my response to it. And hopefully we'll get more answers and more analysis as we move forward in this journey of investing and covering Palantir. Thank you guys for watching. Look forward to reading the comments. I'll see you in the next one.